Alright guys, welcome to another exciting episode of Come Again. I'm Shannon. Really? Yeah. <laughs> I'm Billy. <laughs> and here shortly, John's going to be joining us via webcast. Uh, we're only, I think we're probably only going to do audio for him. Because uh, it's just a pain in the butt trying to read this, read these stories and everything. Yeah, and he'd break the camera anyway. Yeah. All right, so. Um, Star-Lord meets his father in another new clip from Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2. Um, you knew it was going to happen. Yeah. Um, bring the Celestials into <clears throat> it. <laughs> uh, Lev Schreiber was approached to reprise the role of Sabretooth in Logan. I think he would have made it a lot better than it ended up being. Yeah, I didn't like I didn't like the villain that much. I didn't either. And that and it was that easy to kill Wolverine. Why didn't it do that a long time ago? Yeah, that and uh, I don't know. It was just kind of dull. I got a lot of heat on this channel for my review of the movie. Oh. See, I, I just watched it for X twenty three for Laura, just because X twenty three is awesome and yeah. She did a better Wolverine than what Wolverine does. <laughs> Let's see, King Arthur Legend of the Sword. I'm really looking forward to that. Yeah, movie. I want to see it. It looks good. Um, which I've got the graphic novel of King Arthur in there. I still have to read. Oh. Um, I'm going to read it to get prepared for it. So, Not like there's much to get prepared for. Everyone knows the Well, it, de <laughs> yeah. it depends on what, what one you're reading because you have a... The one that's told from Merlin's perspective. Yeah. Then you have the one from Gwyn uh, Guinevere's perspective, Lancelot's perspective. Right. There's so many different perspectives. It just depends on which one. <laughs> they actually go from Arthur's perspective. Yeah. Me, personally, the one I like the most with it is the Sword in the Stone. To me, that's canon. That's King Arthur. Yeah. And, of course, uh, my computer is screwing up with comicbookmovie.com because of all the ads they show on this thing. It it won't load properly. They just show they show so many ads mm -hmm. on comics. I see I see that now. Um so did you watch any of the CW shows this week? I haven't seen a single one since <laughs> last season. I watched I watched them all Thursday. Or no Friday. And uh they were okay. I, I haven't been catching them on the day they air like I used to. Just because there's so much other stuff going on that... Yeah, I've been working too much, so I've missed everything this year. Tell the audience what you're doing now for a living, Billy. I work for the post office now. Long days. Very long days. <laughs> uh, so, Supergirl. Let's see, what happened on Supergirl? Um, she flew, she used heat reason... She'd be punching some guy, kiss the guy. <laughs> I'm not liking how this is going. <laughs> I'm going to have to do a lot of editing. <laughs> you can just spoil this for me. I don't care. I'll probably forget anyway, so. Flash ran in circles, arrow shot arrows. The Flash went to the future. Again? And met, met his future self. The, the costume, the new Flash costume, yeah. looks amazing. It's brighter red. It's okay. got the yellow uh, lightning bolts going across here. The okay. Thicker. So it's like the one off of uh, the DC Legends game when it becomes... Uh, kind of. That's pretty cool. I think John's getting ready to call in. No mic. We never invited a mic. <laughs> Microphone. Oh. My lapel mic that's missing. Are you there? Hello, John. <laughs> What's up, Ugly? You don't like my tie? He just got out of church, man. This tie's awesome, dude. This is an awesome tie. <laughs> and the Deadpool pin brings it all together. The what? The Deadpool pin. Oh. You're going to have to raise it up. The camera's right there. <laughs> nice, huh? Let's see, look. All right, so you're gonna have to talk a little bit louder because I can't. Since I can't find my lapel mic, we're just doing your audio. So last time I saw, it was hanging from the uh, ceiling in the basement. Did you there. did you check around the Legos? Yeah, mm. I even played with them a bit. 
<laughs> I'm not surprised. Yeah. All right, so live Leif Schreiber was approached about re uh, about becoming Sabretooth again for Logan. What do you think about that? I want to know why it didn't happen. I'd like to too. I love Sabretooth. I love the Sabretooth. Let me bring this camera awesome. a little bit closer so that maybe it'll pick up. I go closer, but then it's like, <laughs> ah, what's up my nose? Not you. You didn't want to see that. No. Alright. Feeling strong. It's a tripod. <laughs> Alright. There we go. It's a little bit better. It's a cat. Alright, so John, what did you think about how I re-edited your review? Have you watched it yet? Review. I haven't watched it yet. What review? Review on uh, Scooby-Doo meets Green Lantern and Green Arrow. Oh. I didn't do much to it. I just put the pages in the background, moved your image over oh, okay. to the side of the screen. Since John likes to film with his phone long ways rather than the normal way. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Now we can see you. <laughs> All right. So today on the show, we are going to be reviewing Billy Got comic here from C2E2. It's an indie comic. Can you see that, John? Yeah, yeah, I saw, uh, he showed that to me uh, last week. Yep. Hyper Action Featuring the Resistance yep. from Big Blue Comics. And by the way, speaking of uh, Billy and C2E2, thanks again for the awesome comic signed by Jerry the King Lawler. That wasn't a problem. I knew you liked him, so. Really nice I guy, too. It. I probably won't open it. <laughs> so I can't review it, but... Yeah, it was just really cool when I actually got to meet him. Jack Swagger and uh, me and Gene were standing right next to him. Nice. I think they were kind of salty because I didn't ask for this. Me and Gene? Old. Yeah. Old. He looks like he needs to do, like some serious Botox. And he'd still look like a melted <laughs> butter. <laughs> So, also today on Come Again, uh, which these are going to premiere uh, in a few weeks, actually, these uh, pop reviews, because I've got, I've got like 13 pop reviews lined up so far. You don't want to come see my collection now. <laughs> so, you want to pass those over here. So, first so is thing... This, is this video or is this just audio? Video. Your audio. Your audio. Video for us. Because we're pretty. Oh, okay. So going to be reviewing Felicity Smoke. My wife just bought this for me today from Mega Replay. I would let her review me. Oh, yeah. Uh, Patty Steve, Tolan. Don't say that about Shannon's wife. That is not cool. <laughs> Patty Tolan. This was on sale at Mega Replay for $4.49, which is really cool. Still haven't seen the new movie. And I just bought this one from Billy today. That Deadpool. was... Deadpool. It's supposed to be the C2E2 exclusive because it came in the pop read box, but I found him on the shelf. Yeah. As well, so there really wasn't any C2E2 exclusive Funko Pops up there. Yeah, I've actually seen this reviewed once on uh, on YouTube, really. Um, it's like the only one I haven't found in the wild with all the ones on the back has been... Well, who else on there? Doctor Strange. The Falcon. He's the only one I have not seen. Because all this is, is, I think, let me think. It's just a regular Deadpool that they just put a suit on. Well, no, they they, the they, they they took the body from another pop uh, because it's a suit. And then they just took the head from Deadpool and put it on. But, yeah, that's pretty cool. Glare. Also, Billy is going to be reviewing... This heavy thing. Groot. See that, John? Yeah, he's seen that one. Which I still haven't found. Good luck. All right, so. In fact. Any comics you've read lately, John? Other than. None. None. But I've been reading, uh, I've been reading the new Star Wars uh, Thrawn by Timothy Zane. 
Okay. Uh, I think I'm up to like uh, almost chapter eight or nine. That's really good. It's uh, basically the backstory behind uh, Grand Admiral Thrawn before he was uh, Grand Admiral, how before he even went to the Empire. Okay. Um, it tells the story of how he met the met the Empire, got into the Empire, met the uh, Emperor. Uh, it took him through, um, uh, I guess, Empire School. <laughs> That's about where I'm at now. He just, he just graduated there, and he's now a lieutenant Thrawn. So nice. I um, got the uh, Barnes and Noble exclusive one. Very nice. Which uh, there's two different ones. There's the um, Thrawn with his face in, on the side and the white background. That's the regular version. Um, and then another version is his face with a black background. And it's, uh, besides that, the, the other difference is it actually comes with a uh, poster. Thrawn. Okay. So. I'm actually currently reading uh, Dynamite's King um, comics. Right now, I started with, uh, kind of started off with the first few pages. What the hell are you doing? He's glitching. <laughs> started off with King's Wait. Quest by Dynamite. Which has the Phantom, Flash Gordon, Mandrake the Magician, Prince Valiant, and a few others. Yeah. Cool. Um, but in order to understand it, I had to go back and read the single issues. Uh, four issues from each character. Uh, right now I'm on King Phantom number three I'm getting ready to read. I just finished one and two. Um, then once I'm done with that, I'll get Mandrake the Magician, Prince Valiant, and all those. And Jungle Jim, I think, is a part of it as well. Um, <clears throat> but the Phantom in that time died during uh, King's Watch. At the very end of King's Watch, which is the first part of... The first chapter of King's Quest. And so now they... Uh, is taking over as the Phantom. Until they find the true heir to the Phantom. Ain't no Billy Zane. I'm holding back a joke that's probably not appropriate. <laughs> <laughs> but the way they do it makes... The Phantom's nickname. Anyway, this uh, guy who's taking up the role of the Phantom um, until they can find the true heir to the Phantom legacy. Um, he's actually a really good Phantom. Alright, so anyway. <laughs> another comic I'm getting ready to read is The Shadow Now. Also by Dynamite Comics. It's the shadow taking place in today. Rather than being back in like the 30s and 40s. It actually That'd takes cool. place today. Yeah. Um, so I'm getting ready to read that. Are you getting your books? Huh? Comixology. Are you getting your books? Comixology. Get, you can get the digital downloads from Comixology. Oh. He's not getting hard copies. He's no. getting soft copies. He likes a soft copy. By the way, guys, this is not a sponsored episode. But I recently tried this stuff, and I am addicted to it now. It's because they put crack in it. It's what called it? It's called body armor. It's it's uh, a lot better than Gatorade. It's all natural. Instead of water, they use coconut water. And just tons of flavor. Just... It's delicious. Would that technically be milk? Well, yeah, I guess so. But milk don't have water. <laughs> uh, total fat zero grams, uh, seventy calories, twenty milligrams of sodium, three hundred and fifty milligrams of potassium. How much sugar? Uh, eighteen grams. What's the sugar in the total carbs? How much? Uh, eighteen grams on sugars. That's a lot. Carbs is eighteen carbs. grams. Eighteen and eighteen. It's not bad. This and it's is, delicious as hell. That's the official sponsor. We aren't getting paid What's by Pepsi. <laughs> Pepsi, it's the choice. Yes, and it's the choice of a new generation. <laughs> you got the right one, baby! Uh huh. I watched the old throwback of Michael Jackson <laughs> when the little kid bumped into him on the street when he's drinking Pepsi, a can of Pepsi. <laughs> 
I was it like, might have been the commercial where he burned his nose off. No, it wasn't. A, that's, that was the Diet Pepsi one with yeah. Ray Charles. This one was on the street. Uh, so for those of you who don't know, let me switch this around real quick. So we are talking to John this way here. This is why we can't have it turned around because you're on a computer, John. And we still need to be able to look stuff up on the computer if need be. And then if we turn the computer around, we wouldn't be able to see you either. Oh, it's a bookmark. That's pretty neat. But uh, Speaking of uh, John, did you happen to check to see if you had any of those Harvey comics I asked you about? Harvey? Yeah. Harvey, whatever. Like, uh, I don't think I have any Harvey comics. Mm -hmm. I mean, like little Lulu and Casper and shit. Yeah, I sent. Yeah, I sent you a picture of uh, um, what my friend is wanting. I'll check again. Okay. Check the picture and look cool. again. I don't think I have any Harvey, but I'll check. I might have some in the dollar boxes. Don't think about it. I'll For those it. of you who know who have kids, yeah. Uh, I have a friend who has a, another YouTube channel, a very popular kids YouTube channel. He contacted me last night, asked me if I knew of anywhere where that he could order comics off of, and I automatically thought of John. And I could have sworn I saw some of the Hervey comics. Uh, we had that one binder. What happened to it? That all them old books. Uh, in it. Those, the, that binder has no... Harvey and those are all Dell. Oh. Gold key. Okay. He might be interested. There might be, there might be some Harvey in the uh, dollar box. I'll look in the dollar box. Um, for those of you who don't know, I'm, I've been reviewing a lot of IDW's Ghostbusters lately. Have you watched any of the episodes? The, no. What about you, John? I'm working all the time. <laughs> yeah, me too. Shut up. Working. No, it's Switch. <laughs> but have have you watched any of my... Were you complaining last night about playing the Switch? I love playing with your joysticks. <laughs> have you watched any of the uh, Go IDW Ghostbusters reviews I did? I think I watched a couple. Right now I am working on the Mass Hysteria two-book uh, storyline. Uh, I just reviewed Mass Hysteria 1. Uh, probably next week I'll be reviewing Mass Hysteria 2. The way I see it is you've got Ghostbusters, you've got Ghostbusters 2, Ghostbusters the video game, which is technically Ghostbusters 3. Yeah. Then the Mass Hysteria stories from IDW. I consider those Ghostbusters 4. They are that good. They're, they follow the same timeline and everything. They bring all, uh, they combine both movies and the video game together. Just they, it comes full circle. Great stories, highly recommend them. Oh, I, we uh, trade a lot of them. <laughs> when we were able to actually get together physically again. I do have three new Master Universe Classics figures to review. Cool. Hear that, guys. John will eventually be reviewing some Masters Universe Classics figures if we can ever get him out of the house and over here. Good luck with that. All right. So, any more news you got for us, John? No. I can think of nothing. <laughs> you are nothing. So, for those of you guys who don't know, uh, we have been busy the past uh, month or so here lately with my other channel. John's been helping me with it, so is Billy on occasion. When I'm not working. Yeah. Um, have a horror channel out now, which... I told you guys about a while back. Um, it's, Twisted Zombie, right? Yeah, it's called Twisted Zombie Productions. We just did the season finale of The Watching, which is a special half an hour episode. Um, John was a big part of that. Um, I, I didn't really care for the uh, audio track on that, though. I, I liked the more silent one. I liked the dialogue one better. See, it was because... I didn't really care for the dialogue because I had to cut so much on that because John kept cracking us up. Then leave it to John. Yeah. What? I'm going to start doing the script and you're going to have to stick to it. He can't even read a book without skipping ahead. What the hell are you, what are you 
he's smoking. I never skip ahead. <laughs> so, but yeah, we've been working on some horror videos. Uh, so check it out, Twisted Zombie Productions. Um, we shot, we filmed one uh, in Hell's Hollow here over by Greenwood Cemetery uh, about a month or so ago. I have no idea where that's at. I'm not filming. Episode either. 3. Yeah, episode 3. Um, Is that the actual name of the place? Yeah, it's, it's over there in Lincoln Park by Milliken. I didn't know that's what it was called. Yeah, Hell's Hollow. It's right behind Greenwood Cemetery. Hmm. <clears throat> It's supposed to be really haunted, but I've never seen shit crap out there. So. Yeah. Show that ruined the illusion. <laughs> um, also, John and I are getting ready to work on, collaborate on a videos antho a horror anthology series for Twisted Zombie Productions. Yeah, my sixth son. He was up all night, that's why he was sleeping on the couch. But we're getting ready to work on a horror anthology series called Tales from Hell's Hollow. Which is going to be very similar to like a cross between the Twilight Zone and Tales from the Crypt. And it's going to be hosted by Baron Von Goulstein. Who's that? Baron Von Goulstein. The Baron's looking forward to it. That's, that's what I heard anyway. <laughs> How's he, are you guys doing this at night or something? No, it's better this way. Dis, disappointment's better. <laughs> She said it was a game. <laughs> Just a tip. <laughs> it's a, it, you know, from D and D last night. I about killed her DM. <laughs> <laughs> Can you imagine Superman beat Crypto in front of Peta? That'd be pretty bad. You think he ever did that? What? If he ever took Crypto to Peta and beat him in front of the place, <laughs> that'd be pretty funny. What are you going to do? It's Superman. <laughs> you stopped it right now. <laughs> I have a twisted mind. I can't help it. Obviously. Kind of getting yeah, off the point here. <laughs> no, it's still comic book related. Uh, it's Superman and Crypt talking about his dog. Yeah, I was trying to keep yeah, the dog out of it. Can imagine Crypto on one of his uh, heated days where he just goes around and humps every stranger who's leg he sees? Broken legs everywhere. Perfect. I, I'd hate to be the. Uh, I'd hate to be the female dog that. Oh man. <laughs> Goes back to the whole kryptonite condom theory. That would kill him. Though. Speaking of which, it hasn't actually been revealed in DC Comics Rebirth how Clark and Lois had a son together. Ah, I can explain this. This is not that hard to explain. Kid? Yeah, the new Superboy. I can explain how this happened. Red Sun. Get a red sun lamp. Or one of the red sun rooms like they have, like they in the show. They take away his powers, they could do that. Yeah, see, that's they, how you they do did, it. however, explain that Superman brought in Batman and Wonder Woman to the fortress for nine months or however long to kind of help out with Lois all the, while all, she was pregnant. So. All, all they need to do... Yeah, sure, that's what, uh, that's what Superman and Wonder Woman were doing. Yeah, yeah, helping Lois. <laughs> yeah, I bet they Behind were. Behind her back. Wait, all they have to do is get one of them chambers from Supergirl, and there you go. Just put some, you know, some, some lace up and black light and Andy Warwick paintings everywhere. Or just keep him in the dark for however that, long, because he's a, he's a solar battery. He needs the sun for his powers. And it'd take a lot longer. He'd have to be in there for, like, months. I think he's absorbed the sun for years. And if you consider some of the movies canon where he actually flew into the sun. Yeah, but in Final Night, the sun was out for, what, 24 hours, and he started losing his powers. So. I don't understand that. That's just weird. So anyway, we are going to go ahead and we are going to review these other pops. Um, get them all lined up for uh, next... Uh, Next few weeks after these 12 or 13 have already. What are you spanking over there? <laughs> I like big plastic things. I bet you do. <laughs> 
So anyway, guys, if you want to see more John and not just on a computer or just hear his voice, tell him to get his ass up off the couch and get over here so we can film. This is the cool thing about this one. He actually snaps in. So do the others. <laughs> I am Groot. I am Negan. Oh, by the way, I'm, how was it meeting your idol at C2E2? She's so pretty! <laughs> I got to meet Erica Henderson. It was amazing. I, who, for those of them who don't know, who is Erica Anderson? She is the artist behind the unbeatable Squirrel Girl, and one of the best character person ever, next to Stanley. Was your wife jealous at all? No, my wife loved meeting her, and my wife is now a nerd. She watches all the shows that are on TV. She loves the movies. And she's been to her first comic book convention, and now she's planning a trip to Wizard World. Um, she's planning our trip Wizard next World year, year to C2E2. Yeah, this year. She wants to go to Wizard World. She wants to go to uh, Geekly Con, which is um, another podcast. If you go on like iTunes, let's look up geeklyinc.com. You can, they do D&D. They got all kinds of neat stuff. That's what I'm she's telling you, come to Gen Con with Cindy and I this year. She doesn't play board games. But we're going to go to Wizard yeah, World. Yeah, she didn't, read, she, didn't like, she didn't like comic stuff either. But, well, we're going to go to Wizard World because they've already announced two of the people that I can't wait to meet is Kevin Sorbo and Dean Kane are going to be there. Nice. So that's going to be awesome. So they're going to have Monel's dad yeah. and Kara's adopted dad. Yeah. I'm not sure who else is going to be there, but those are the two big ones that are going to be there this year. From what so, they said. What do you guys think about the uh, guy who they announced was going to be the next Doctor? Who's that? Uh, I don't know who he is. I don't yeah, either. That's, that's why he said, who's that? He he doesn't look like uh, uh, like he could be the Doctor, though. So let me, let me like, bring it up. No, I, honestly, you know, I was actually hoping female doctor this time. I was hoping James Marsters would become the doctor. Complete with his spike accent. That would have been cool. I uh, wanted Amy Pond to become the doctor. Uh, Amy Pond or... Um, uh, Hel Helen Mirren. Helen Mirren would make a good doctor. And something that they had to take advantage of, Patrick Stewart said he would do at least one season of Doctor Who if he was asked to play the doctor. He'd do yeah, that would be good too. No, not Patrick Stewart. Uh, I would no, love to see not, Patrick Stewart no, as a doctor. He can't move around that good. Shit, too. He's used to sitting in a chair doing this. Have you not... Okay, maybe it's just... I'm making fun of Patrick Stewart from... Uh, Logan. Now, I know... They announced him, or they said he had been signed on to be the uh, Chris Cribnall, where the incoming doctor. Yeah, Chris Chibnall. Who the heck is that? The next doctor. Is he English? Well, um, Sounds like he could be German. Hi. The, the, the first doctor of the new series wasn't in English, he was Scottish. This current doctor is Scottish. There we go, that's what we need. We need a German doctor. Have him yell, Hell, Hell Hydra. No, we don't. We've had enough of those. Hell, Hell Hydra. <laughs> Hell Hydra. Oh, that's what I want to ask you guys. What do you think about the new thing they're doing with Captain America? That well, he's we already know that they were uh, memory implants. Nope, they Scottish. were not. He was going to tell him, he, yes, they are, he was going to tell Steve before he, spoiler, before he killed the Red Skull. So his Red Skull never got a chance to tell him they were memory implants. No. Fake implants at that. You, so now he actually thinks no, that his that's, memories uh, of Hydra and they are real. Yes. No, you haven't seen it, have you? He actually has been a part of Hydra since before he became Captain America. 
Marvel announced it. No, Marvel completely announced it that they're not memory implants. That the implants came when he was injected with the super soldier. That he hated Hydra. He's been their greatest infiltrator ever. They were not implants. They just were slowly. He, they he finally something slipped. Somebody slipped somewhere, or they found to bring all this out about him being Hydra. He's actually been a Hydra agent before he became Captain America. I don't like that. This entire time he's if been their biggest spy. If that's true, which I don't think it is because they just did a panel where uh, Skull was about to announce that he did that to Steve and then Steve killed him before he had a chance. So, But if what you're saying is true, um, fuck Marvel. Yeah, yeah. There's, I haven't read Marvel in years anyway, but yeah, they're saying that he's been Hydra's biggest agent since before he because they're saying well, the, everybody knows about the implants with his mom, saying that 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 those none of those were implants; those were actual true things that happened. And he always, that's why he kept trying to enlist in the army. He was trying to get in to be able to get information about this because they knew the doctor was there that could do the super soldier serum. And they knew he knew if he could get in, he would get picked for it. Because he was the weakest and he would do all this stuff for everybody else. And that's what got him in to get picked for the Super Soldier Serum. I hope they don't make a movie out of that. They will. You know they will. They'll turn him. Nah, they won't. <clears throat> it's too controversial at the moment. They'll turn him. Controversy sells. Eric Bischoff. Not in this. Eric Bischoff said it best. I don't like it. Nobody likes it, but it's that's what it is. Fuck Marvel. If that's true, then yeah, definitely. Well, you got to see. They do that, I, then... I don't think it is. I, I don't think that, that's not going to last. It's not going to fly. Well, see, what have, if they do this with... All Marvel Comics just to fix that goof up. I, Marvel and DC are basically right now in competition of who can revive their comics... The most in the span of, like, a lifetime. Well, and see, this is how you do with Chris Evans if when his movie contract ends with the Falcon becoming Captain America. This is how you bring him in as Captain America. And you get the female Thor. That's what I'm thinking with Ragnarok is going to be so good. Because I know that guy from work. <laughs> I just wish they'd show Beta uh, Be uh, Ray Bill. Because he was there as well. But... This is how you bring in all these other versions of people, and that's how you work in the New Mutants, the Defenders. That's how you bring everybody in. Uh, they've screwed up Iron Man, they've screwed up... Uh, how do you screw up Iron Man? Man? They know they're screwing up Captain America. They screwed up Doctor Strange. They've screwed up the X-Men to the point to where they can't fix it. No, see, I was just reading... Thanks, 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 in, thanks in part to Marvel, uh, Fox. No, see what I was reading? I was just reading it. Um, with Logan, um, after Days of Future Past, the original X-Men trilogy that was made does not exist. That is not canon anymore. The only, the only, the only Marvel comic that I don't feel they really screwed up um, is the new Wolverine. Um, All new Wolverine with Laura? I gotta, go, I gotta go back and say, I actually like the Amazing Spider-Man. I said they screwed up Spider-Man. They didn't really screw up. I like actually the... Uh, the all-new Amazing Spider-Man books, too. Yeah. Where he's actually um, more of a Tony Stark-type uh, character. Yeah. Except oh. he's trying to gain all this money and be a complete ass. Mm -hmm. He's using all his technology and almost giving it away. Shannon needs a hug. I'm stressed. <laughs> Give him a hug, Billy. Give him a hug. Bring it in. Bring it in. I'm a no. hugger. Come on, Shannon. Bring no. it in. You know you want to. Come on, Shannon. No. You want a hug. No. Huggies. No. Well, inter internet hug, John. Eh, hug. Uh, <laughs> hugging, hugging through my. Well, no. You stay in your space. I'll stay in my space. Oh wait, that doesn't exist anymore, does it? There is still my space, but it's all music now. Seriously? Yeah. I, I, I went to my I went to my MySpace page about uh, two weeks ago. You can still do that? It hmm. looks nothing at all like I made it out to be. No. I put all that work into my page, and I hadn't gone on there in probably about five or six years. And I finally went on there two <gasps> oh. weeks ago, and 
All that work. I haven't been on in five years, but all that work. <laughs> all right, guys. So we're going to go ahead and bring this video podcast to an end. And I think we're going to go ahead and review some of the, some more of these pops. I I'm I got to get home. So okay, I because cool. the pay per views on the night and it's hey, wrestling. Man. Yeah. Screw wrestling. Get the shit. The title's not being uh, up for grabs. So yeah, far. it is. Explain explain to me why Brock Lesnar can go three months without defending a title when the actual rule of the title is you have to defend at least every thirty days. He just won the title Wait, at WrestleMania. Huh? He just won it at WrestleMania. That's only been and like he's not going to defend it. twenty-eight he's not days. Going to defend it until uh, June or July. He's not defending it until the next pay-per-view. It's Raw. He's on Raw, not SmackDown. This is a SmackDown pay-per-view. He's not. No. He's no. The next time he's um, defending it is uh, like June or July. They gotta let Goldberg get back into shape. He's not facing Goldberg. <laughs> Rumor has he's gonna face Stra- uh, Strowman. Oh, that'd be a good fight. Ooh. So, you know who Ron Strowman is? But Kinda. He's like a, he's a legit <laughs> strong man. Um, but no, the rule is 30 days. If you don't defend the title in 30 days, you're supposed to be stripped of the damn thing. If you're going to so do that, you need to go back. Brock Lesnar, he gets away. He's a... Uh, it's going to turn into a wrestling podcast every, now. Uh, every now and then, wrestler. Um, if you're going to do that, then you need to go back and strip Bruno San Martino of his eight-year run. Because they only defended okay. it four times a year. Okay. That's why he was able to hold on to it for eight years. <laughs> Anybody that's held the title, the only person that's actually defended the title every 30 days or more or less has been CM Punk. It's like, that's why I don't consider Hulk Hogan or Bruno San Martino's records valid. No, CM Punk. And it's not just because he's the second city Satan, he's the greatest wrestler ever. It's the fact that he actually defended any title he ever had in any company that he was with. He defended. He had a passion, he had a passion for the business, and thanks to WWE, that passion's gone. Yes, they, like he, well he said it best with his pipe bomb. He's just a spoke and he knows the wheel's going to keep on turning without him there. And it sucks. Yeah. And I actually got to see him at C2E2, but I wasn't going to say anything to him because his handle was there and I didn't feel like getting knocked out. He's about the same size as me too. That's his, I remember, it's like wow, dude. He's really not that much bigger than me. So anyway, guys, that was kind of <laughs> again for this week. Uh, we'll see you again later. Um, like I said, we've got pop reviews coming out every Tuesday. And if I can never get John out of his house and over here to film, we'll have more regular podcasts. He can do it better than I can. I'm at work all the time, so. I get like one day off a week if I'm lucky. And it's usually Sundays and I'm tired. <laughs> because somebody keeps me up all night playing D&D. <laughs> and So take care, guys. And we'll be back with another Please. pop review. John will be here back at some point with some Masters of the Universe Classics reviews. So, uh, have a good one. Later. <laughs>